was like watching a dumpster fire. An entertaining dumpster fire, but a dumpster fire nonetheless. Scene. I'm in a different location than normal. I'm at home for Christmas here pumping around. That's either my parents or my dogs But I'm so sorry for not uploading during this term. I'm sick a lot of the time. I'm just really busy So I didn't get to film my weekly videos as much as I wanted to. Hopefully this next term is really chillax for me I only have two classes my disc to do but I figured it would be a fun way to wrap up the year If I went through all of my books I read I read 28 books this year probably 30 I have two on the go right now I think I'll finish before the end of the year so I I am gonna do this from worst to best and a lot of the books I've read this year I don't own anymore I have a rule that if I rate them below a three I get rid of them I just don't see the point in holding on to books that I didn't enjoy I only have this is like all I have of the 28 books I read this year which I think is better than half but yeah let's just get into it I guess so this year I had four books that I rated two stars I had every reason we shouldn't by Sarah Fujimara the devil house by Jean on Darnielle, which I think I talked about in another video. The Winds Are Not by S.J. Bennett and The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Arms. So every reason we shouldn't, I actually picked up in like a blind bag sort of situation at a bookstore. And I think if I read it when I was like 13, I really would have enjoyed it. But I'm 23 now. So I like the critical part of my brain has kind of developed a bit more. And I'd be like, hey, this character is whiny. There's no plot nothing makes sense. Didn't enjoy it. Devil House, I talked about in another video, which I'll put up in the card. I talked about in the last like minute of the video. I just didn't like it. It is a very heavy critique of true crime, the exploitative nature of true crime authorship and writing about true crime, which I really liked. But the voice changed so much in the book. The book is written from the perspective of an author who is going to write about a true crime. So it's like an author writing about an author. But he spends half the book of this author describing another like hit book they wrote about like a completely separate crime case. There was like a little bit of a connection, but I was like, you're wasting so much time on this and it wasn't even a long book so I just I didn't like it and then The Winds Are Not by S.J. Bennett I didn't understand it was it's a fairly quick book it's just under 300 pages but it's basically written that there's a murder at Windsor Castle and the Queen Queen Elizabeth II who is now dead is solving it and a I had the knowledge in my head that she's dead. I was like, mm. And then two, just so much of it seems so like fanciful, which I get. You're writing a book about the queen solving murders, but then there's a whole lot of points I weren't elaborated on. And they would like mention something in a one-off and I'd be like, y'all saw that, right? Like we're just gonna mention that one to move on. Okay, cool. I didn't really like that. How the crime was like solved, I didn't understand. So there's that as well. And then the final book is The Inheritance Games. I picked up because of TikTok and I hate it. But basically it's like this girl who's fairly poor gets left in the will of this like Texas billionaire who has three grandsons that she like has to move into the house and there's like a whole bunch of conditions of like her getting access to the well. Main character, annoying. Main character, sister, annoying. I only liked one of the brothers but ever I found them all annoying and there's like a big plot twist at the end of the book that I predicted. Basically they say like this character's dead and I was like mm, no I think it's actually this character and I was right. It's like a big plot point and they paste like this second and third books off and I was like if I predicted it that soon into the first book what's the point in reading the second and third and I've also heard the second and third books are not good so so I rated three books two and a half and it was People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Malores and The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt so People We Meet on Vacation um one of my friends gifted it to me like two Christmases ago and I was like oh I'll wait to read this in summer and then I didn't I read it in February I didn't like either of the main protagonists it's about like two friends friends from college that normally go on like a yearly vacation and then and one they get in like a massive fight at the end and then they end up going on a yearly vacation because I can't remember why I think it's just because it's tradition whatever and it's like a romancy thing I don't know I didn't like it some of the plot points were just like pulled out of thin air in my opinion I don't know I do love a good romance novel but only when it's written well and there's like some substance to it. Next is Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Muller. I read this on my turkey vacation, which I vlogged if you wanna watch it, I don't know. I was like, yeah, about it. And then I had a friend who read it around the same time. And I think she posted it on her Be Real. It said something to the effect of like, everyone in this book is trying so hard to be edgy and cool and it just comes off the wrong way. And I was like, oh my God, yeah, pretty much. It's one of the most toxic relationships I've ever read about in a book, which I think is like the main point of the book, but everyone's so edgy and they're in New York and they do and I'm like 
I, th those kind of books are a dime a dozen. There's nothing in this book that I was like, wow, something different or, oh, I really connect with this character. I just found everyone annoying. The third one that I feel like I might get some hate for is The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. I don't like Donna Tartt's writing style. I don't. I think all of her characters try to be cool and edgy and different and I find them annoying and she just drags on in her descriptions of stuff. Like I don't need three pages of this random person's apartment or this random person's life story that I'm only gonna interact with this person for like two chapters. I don't need it. I don't need it. I think her books could be a lot shorter. Her characters could have a little bit more depth to them besides being like a random trauma dump, some of them. But yeah, I just don't like Donald Dart's writing style personally. I really wish I could. I rated one book, two and three quarters. I use Storygraph to rate my books, by the way, which I really like. I used to use Goodreads, but you can only rate it like a half. And it is Mayflower by Nathaniel Philbrick. I didn't like it. I had to read it for a class. It was very heavily on the pilgrim perspective of colonizing America and the first Thanksgiving and he I think could have engaged with indigenous voices a little bit better personally and a lot of the names he gives to indigenous I want to say characters because they were real people indigenous individuals in this book or they're like white names or names that were given to them by the pilgrims and I don't necessarily agree with giving that name in a book I think it's kind of and problematic in my opinion. I don't know. I didn't like it. Wrote the final essay for the class. Did not reference this book once. I instantly gave it away. I rated two books, three stars. It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey and The Hedgehog Handbook by Sally Coulthard. It Happened One Summer, similar to People Meet on Vacation. I didn't like. I found the main characters okay. Very predictable though. I just didn't really connect with the characters. There is a second book in this series. Apparently it's a series. There's another one written about the main female protagonist little sister uh, and then hedgehog handbook by sally coulthard it's just a little cute book about hedgehogs i picked up in a random bookstore i did find it really repetitive though where she talked a lot about like how many i think hedgehog babies are called pups how many pups they have and their eating habits and that they're nocturnal and like how to take care of them and stuff a lot and i was like okay babes we get it if i find a sleepy looking hedgehog either leave it there or call an animal res rescue society cool don't need to say it seven times i think i got it i rated one book three and a quarter and that is spare by prince harry i will never get the time or the mental capacity back that I lost reading this book. It was like watching a dumpster fire. An entertaining dumpster fire, but a dumpster fire nonetheless. There was so much information that I was like, you willingly chose to put this out here and thought it would like garner sympathy or make you look good. That is interesting choice, sir. Interesting choice. Got three quarters of the money I paid for it back by selling it. And I was like, phenomenal. <sighs> yeah, I, I, we all saw the memes. Enough said. Another Donna Tart book I read this summer was A Secret History, which I rated 3.5. I read this before the Goldfinch. I think it was really interesting because the main protagonist was a bit of a unreliable narrator and kind of took everything in the book with a grain of salt and he was very self-centered, I don't know, egocentric. I don't know, he thought he was like the greatest Greek thing to ever happen. No, you're just annoying. I did connect more with some of these characters, but I think, again, it could have been a lot shorter. I didn't need five pages of description of what this college campus looked like in every season. I did a few sentences. Snowy, campus looked nice. Fall, wow, pretty leaves. Spring, flowers were growing. Bada bing, bada bing. A lot of books, 3.75. First, this is one I still own. I rated After I Do by Taylor Jenkins Reid, 3.75. This is about a couple that marriage is failing. They decide to take a year apart and then they come back together at the end. I don't know if that's a spoiler. Maybe it is, I don't know. There are some parts of this book. I was like, that is, again, some of those toxic, I've ever read. Like they, the main female protagonist figures out that she still has access to her husband's emails and finds out that he is writing emails to her but isn't sending them and she reads them. Huh? She starts doing it to like whatever she wants to talk to him really bad but they go with like no contact. At the end of the book she finds out that he did the same thing to her. I'm like we're not about to romanticize that. That is creepy as hell. So I enjoyed it. I really like Taylor Jenkin Reid. I think she's one of my favorite authors at the minute. This is one of hers that I read that I was like but I think we all gotta have a few flops to have a few slice. I'm actually loaning these next two to my dad at the minute. Um, it is Conspiracy, A History of Bollocks Theories and How Not to Fall for Them by Tom Phillips and John Edelich. I really liked this one. I'm reading a lot more nonfiction. I think that's just because it's older. Now I used to think nonfiction was boring and now I'm like, mm, that, that, that kind of slapped. One thing I will say is the two authors, one of them is quite a bit older. I will 
haven't looked it up i want to say 50s 60s just by the way he writes and the other one is like millennial to gen z and the voices show and i don't love that if you're gonna co-author with two people i want it to be very like blended because i find it distracting when the voice is changing to like some like like one of my uni lectures to like one of my friends explaining something to me like I didn't love that. I did think it was a really interesting book though and I do recommend reading it. Next is How, Hard, How High We Go in the Dark by Sequoia Nagamatsu. I hope I say that right. I really like this one. I think I might change my rating a little bit higher. I will say it takes place at different points of like a global pandemic. Been there, done that. But it's like massive time jumps like three, four generations, hundreds of years kind of thing. All the stories kind of interconnect, which I thought was really clever. Like you'll read about someone and then you're reading about their like great granddaughter three chapters later, or you're reading about someone that's like coming up with like a cure for this plague. And then you find out like four chapters later that their cure ended up working. I will say it could have been done a lot cleaner because in the back of my mind, when I'm reading, I'm not really enjoying, I'm trying to figure out how this plot line relates to a different plot line elsewhere in the book or like, oh, is this person maybe related to this character? Is this going on or is that going on? I think it kind of detracted from the story and I wasn't necessarily focusing on the story. I was focusing on how it connected with other stories. Maybe that was the author's intention. I don't know. I just didn't enjoy it. Great. I rated four books, four stars. And the first one is Furies, which is co-authored by a ton of people. It is Margaret Atwood, Susie Boyd, Eleanor Cruz, Emma Donahue, Stella Duffy, Linda Grant, Claire Coda, CN Lester, Christy Logan, Caroline O'Donohue, Chibundo Onuzo, O-N-U-Z-O, Helen Oyeyemi, Rachel Steffert, Camila Shisizme, and Ali Smith. It's like a bunch of little feminist short stories of like reclaiming words that have historically referred to women and have detracted from women in some way. I really liked this. I, there are a few of the stories that I was like, not my favorite, but I think you kind of always get that in the collection of short stories. And look how gorgeous it is. It's so pretty. And then you can tell I read it for class because I have all of my sticky tabs and like all of my highlights. This is another sort of nonfiction book about the first Thanksgiving in Rome, indigenous relations in the northeast of the United States, sort of like Massachusetts area. I think this one did a really great job of representing both Pilgrim and indigenous understandings. This author consulted a lot with surviving indigenous bands in this area and it shows I think he did a really great job. It definitely dragged, but I also don't think I was like necessarily interested in all the topics he was talking about. I'll probably keep it mostly because I can't spell it because of all of these caps. And then the next one is another nonfiction book. It is Honor Best Behavior, Seven Deadly Sins, and The Price Women Pay to Be Good by Elise Lowenen. And it is really interesting talking about the seven deadly sins and how they relate to misogynistic ideas and just perceptions of women and the sort of social pressures women go through on a daily basis. I thought it was really interesting and well done. I think the author in two sections really trauma dumped and I was like, oh, okay girl, um, cool. Sorry that happened to you. Again, really pretty cover. I think it did drag in a few spots, but overall very interesting. And I've actually used it to write essays in a class. All right, here's the other book that I rated four stars. It is Page Boy by Elliot Page, his autobiography. I love this book. I think I might rate this higher. I really enjoyed that actually. I love Elliot Page. I rewatch so many of his movies. I think I watch Juno probably every three months. It was really interesting to see a Canadian voice and a Canadian LGBTQ advocate and actor talk about their life. It did remind me a little bit of I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. I think there are like really similar themes between these two and like how young actors are treated. Hollywood overall very much enjoyed it. All right, I rated seven books, four and a half. First was, if you can hear my dog barking, I'm so sorry. For someone so cute, he is so full of rage. Anyways, Yellow Face by R.F. Quang. I loved this. I thought this was a really good example when compared to A Secret History by Donna Tartt of a really unreliable narrator. It's basically about a white author that steals the identity of their Asian friend who's a much more popular author and starts like stealing their ideas, publishing their book, gets really famous. It was really interesting. And the next one is Original Sins by Matt Roland Hill, a memoir of faith, family, and addiction. I'm also loaning this one to my dad. I just finished this recently. I think I finished this like two weeks ago. I loved it. I thought it was really interesting. I've always been sort of interested in religion and the impact it has on people's lives where it can have really positive impact versus you see people that have a lot of religious trauma. And this is an example of someone kind of going off the deep end where this guy goes from being very evangelist. I think his family is Catholic. They're Welsh and some denomination of Christian. And that among other things creates problems of substance abuse with him. And you really root for him the entire time. Another one, I actually finished this this week is 
you can see that our wives under the sea by julia armfield loved this one of my flatmates recommended it to me last year but then her girlfriend stole it from her or was it giving by i don't know but i saw it when i was in Edinburgh before coming back home to Canada for christmas and i saw the title and i think i read like the first two sentences of the synopsis and was like oh this is the book and i've read it on one plane ride i thought it was really interesting sort of mystery slash romance slash like angsty it's basically about this girl who works for this company it's kind of sketchy and goes on this like deep dive mission and she was supposed to be back in three weeks and ends up being gone for like six months or something and she comes back and moves back in with her wife and her wife's like mm, something's up and everyone that reads it is like mm, something's up because she acts like super strange a lot of weird stuff happens and the wife is trying to also get in contact with the company that hit her wife that went on the deep dive went for it and can't and it's like a whole thing i don't know really interesting really cool overall very much enjoyed it super short i think it's like 230 pages you can read that in, in a day the next one is educated by tara westover i'm also loaning this to my dad this is the one that i had been meaning to pick up for ages and ages and ages and I just never did and then i found it in a thrift shop for five dollars and i was like boom done really enjoyed this similar to original sins it talks a lot about sort of religion and religious trauma and the impact religion had on tara life growing up in sort of a mormon doomsday cult and she ends up going off and pursuing an education and the cognitive dissonance that causes between her family's beliefs and how she was raised versus what she's capable of so and then the next one is another rf quang it is babel she's a chonky one i really enjoyed this i there's a lot of criticisms of this that it drags a bit and i do agree a little bit i read before i go to bed so i would read this and then when it would start dragging i put it down and the next night i would be able to pick it up get through the drag bit get back into interesting stuff i do agree it could be a little bit shorter but i loved the characters in this so much i think if i didn't love the characters so much i would have rated this three and three quarters to three and a half maybe even a three but I love the characters. I love Art of Quinn. This is one I have no way to justify except for I loved it. Next we have, we had to remove this post by Anna votes she's dutch this book is originally written in dutch and this is translated into english obviously because i don't speak dutch from about in recent years there's been a lot of concentration on moderators and facebook instagram tiktok that kind of thing and the psychological impact that has on people and again it's sort of an unreliable narrator i think there's a common theme in a lot of my writing this year that is i love a good unreliable narrator and this is one of them this is super super quick i read this in one day it is 140 pages the next one is another book i've actually had to read for class and it is a curious history of by Kate Lister. Um, I had to read a few excerpts of this from one of my second year modules and I was like hmm this, that book's really interesting I'll pick it up at some point and I could never get it online at Waterstones it was either always sold out or they only had the car hardcover or something and then last winter when I was coming home for Christmas when I was in London with my mom and her friend I went to a Waterstones to get a book for the way home I saw it on this display and it was like dead center it's like oh my god that's a book and I love it it's super informative but also it's good for a little giggle but it also raises a lot of interesting points about misogyny and homophobia yeah i would very much recommend it's all for my 4.5s all right technically i have two books that i read in five stars and one of them is a reread that i cannot figure out how to override so she's just staying at five stars and that is the Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. I think with The Ballad of Songbird and Snakes coming out this year, everyone's sort of falling back in love with The Hunger Games. And I was like, oh my god, I'll reread it. And I was like, damn, like, there is some messed up stuff that happens in this book. And I like look back on it. I read this when I was in the fifth grade going into the sixth grade. So I was, a little, I was 10, turned 11, turned 12. I probably finished the entire series when I was 12 and a half. And I was like, I should not have been reading this at 12. That's not a criticism of my parents' parenting style because they let me read a lot probably should have waited until i was 13 14 to read this one but that's when like the movies were coming out and stuff it's a really funny aside when the first movie came out i was still fairly young and the movies all came out around black friday so my family would go like black friday shopping and so i quite literally had gone to build a bear and gotten like a stuffed dog but also went to go see the first hunger games movie and i remember being really scared and i was like cuddling this teddy bear in the movie probably shouldn't have been watching that oops i can't change the rating on this so i think i rated it five stars when i originally read it so i guess it's still five stars and the other one is a little life this book well i saw so much about it on tiktok about like oh my god it's so sad it's so sad and even i was like too 200 pages in and I was like okay and then I was 400 pages in and I was like oh my god and then I was 500 pages in and it just it gets 
progressively sadder the entire time. I consider myself pretty strong, stomached. There were parts of this book that I had to close it and sit in my bed and be like, oh my god, and give myself a minute and I could go back to it. Phenomenally, phenomenally written. It took me half the time to read this as it did any of my Donna Tartt books and I enjoyed this three times as more. I think this author is incredibly gifted. I don't know if this is their only book. No, it is not. I will probably pick up their other stuff and I hope they publish more in the future. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. Those are all of the books I've read in 2023. If you could give me a like, comment, or even go as far as to subscribe, I would really appreciate it. If you'd like to see more sort of bookish content from me, also comment or like so I know people enjoy this. It is now time for our end of video tradition. We take a sip of our water and we stay happy. We stay happy and we are kind to other people and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.